digest in part two, the extra detail. So in this video, we're just going to add a little bit extra to what we've already learned in the first video. So remember, the first video was the basics. Now you're going to add all those extra little details, enough to help you with the higher level questions. If there's one detail you should know, it's your diagrams. You should be able to not only label a very good diagram, but be able to draw one from freehand. Because when you look over the recent examination questions, often they don't give you the diagram. They ask you to draw it and label it. So it's a good idea when you're doing your notes to try and practice drawing diagrams. So when you are looking over the exam questions and you see diagrams, the first thing that you're often asked to label is the esophagus, then the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the small intestine, the large intestine, the colon in other words, not forgetting the appendix, the rectum and the anus. It's important when you're looking at diagrams to notice particular detail. For example, notice the position of the liver. So it's behind the stomach, it's to the right of the stomach and it's also slightly above the stomach. And know exactly where the liver is, what cavity, it's in the abdominal cavity. This is a really important diagram and it's showing the blood flow or the blood vessels leading into and out of the liver. This is really important. You could be either given this on your exam paper or you could be asked to draw it and label it yourself. So it's really important that if you're drawing blood vessels, you always put in arrows to show the direction of the blood. So one of the things that we start off with is the small intestine. This is where digestion has been completed and the digested food particles are going to pass into the bloodstream and the blood vessel they pass into is known as the hepatic portal vein. This is a very special type of blood vessel. It's an example of a portal system. A portal system is a blood pathway that begins with capillaries and ends with capillaries. So the hepatic portal vein is going to transport or it's in the hepatic portal vein where all these digested food particles passed to the liver for processing. So next we have the hepatic artery. This is carrying oxygenated blood into the liver. And then we have the hepatic vein, which is carrying deoxygenated blood out of the liver. So let's go to the small intestine. We know that's where most digestion takes place and is completed. And we also know it's where those nutrients are absorbed from the small intestine into the bloodstream. So they leave the small intestine, enter the blood and go to the liver for processing. If you were looking inside the intestine, the small intestine with a camera, with a scope, it would look velvety. And it's because it has these finger-like projections called villi. And they're there to increase the surface area for absorption. So they give much more space or area through which nutrients can pass and so absorption takes place quite quickly. So that's a major adaptation of the small intestine. You can see that it has many foldings and it's also quite long. So that's another adaptation for absorption. So it's really suited to absorption because it's very long, it's very folded and it has these villi. And then you go and you look at how the villi, the individual structure of one villus helps with absorption. So let's look at one individual villus because the diagram is very important. So each villus sits on the intestinal wall and you know that it's made of smooth muscle. Smooth muscle can contract and when it does so rhythmically, as in the case of the alimentary canal, it's peristalsis. This is moving the food onwards through the digestive system. It's also important to know that the, at the centre of each individual villus is a lacteal, which is a lymphatic vessel. Also know that they're very thin walled and know that the individual cells that line each villus, they themselves have infoldings and these infoldings are called microvilli and they further increase the surface area for absorption. Also know that some materials are absorbed by active transport. This involves ATP. ATP is made in the process of respiration, which takes place in the mitochondria. So these cells would have many mitochondria. So let's just go back to the liver and give two functions of bile with regard to digestion. So bile is made in the liver and it's stored and concentrated in the gallbladder and then it's secreted into the small intestine. And its first role is to emulsify fats, to turn big droplets of fats into many smaller droplets. And this makes it easier for the pancreatic lipase to act on those lipids and to break them down. The second role of bile is to raise the pH of the chyme. So it helps neutralize the chyme because bile also contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. This is also produced by the pancreas. 
So there you have it. There are some of the details which I think are important that you find often when you're doing the higher level exam questions. So the best of luck, you know, there's a good few videos on digestion now and you have your textbook and you have your own teacher's notes. Best of luck.